Welcome back to another tutorial and this time we're going to go through how to animate presentations for your work using device collections. So here's six different layouts that I will showcase how you can animate from start to finish. The first one is with devices straight on a wooden table with animation going into it. The second one is similar but zooms out. The third one is zooming out and also a slight rotation. The next one here adds additional movement with each of the columns moving up and down. And this one have the same layout as before but the difference here is the solid background to give more prominence to the designs itself. And this last one is also similar but in this case we have no animation at all. Works perfectly fine with your static beautiful designs in this presentation. Let's start off by having a look into how we set this up from design. This first section is about layouts and three potential way of how we can place these devices to make an interesting collection. Two of them is straight on and the last one is rotating. Then we have a device collection artboard and here I'm just going to demonstrate an idea of moving them up and down alternating to showcase in another interesting way. And then lastly we have the famous device mask that we're going to put all the UI motion flows into to mask it into the screen shape itself. So here's how we're going to structure this in After Effects. We do one composition for each of the UI motion flow videos that you've been rendering and then followed you do a composition for each of the device bring in each of those UI motion flows masking inside of the screens. Then you take all those compositions and place them in the desired collection layout. And now when we have the plan of how to do this, let's start by exporting out the assets we need for the animations. It's going to be a fairly short amount of resources, so let's just go ahead, export all the references, dragging out the wood background here to have it isolated. Going over to the device, I'm just going to choose one, that's the only thing I need for now. And then lastly the mask and that's going to be it and if we look into the folder here we have all the different assets when it comes to images and then also i have all the video files that we're going to use in its separate folder now we're in after effects and we're going to start by importing our assets you can do this manually by dragging in the folders or files in the project panel but you can also go into file import and then select file or command or control i on your keyboard you can browse up your folder i'm going to pick the entire assets folder here so this is going to generate my folders and i can start working out how i want to structure this so just as the plan was before let's select all the ui animation flows here and make a composition of each of them by dragging down to the little icon in the left corner then we have all the compositions here of those flows we're going to drag it down to the folder that's going to merge them into one and we can name that for UI motion flow or something useful. Then we can do another folder called compositions and then we can drag that in here. So again, you can do this in any way you want. This is just for inspiration of how to stay organized. I've just been finding over the years that this is so helpful, especially when your product grow to a larger scale and especially if you are collaborating on the same product with others. So let's continue with the next step and that is to drag down the device asset and make a composition of that separately and then we place that in its own folder as well. And now let's go into this composition and add in our device mask. Place this above the device itself and then we can start by dragging one of the UI flows here above it. And just in previous tutorials, let's place this under the device mask, go into column trick mat and choose alpha mat and it will now be masked inside this screen shape. Now we're scrubbing through this and see where the motion ends. We're adjusting the work area by selecting N on your keyboard and then you right click and choose trim comp to work area and that's going to trim the composition to that specific length. And now we're just going to duplicate this and make device 1, 2, 3 and upwards and replace each of them with different animations and I replace this layer by clicking into the layer in the layer panel hold down option key and then drag on the new composition and that's just going to replace it in the same position and size
Now we're going to create the layout itself. So we start off by dragging in one of the reference images into a new composition. And this is going to guide our way of where to place each of these devices and uh, how it all come together. We choose uh, a different folder for this one, place it into the other folder. If you're like me and OSD is screaming all over your work, this is going to be really, really satisfying. Also, of course, it has to be color matching, typical designer needs. And here I'm swapping back to my desktop workspace. And uh, a side note to that is that I'm gonna cover this in a new video coming up of how you can customize your After Effects layout for your specific needs. So as always, if you wanna see that one, subscribe and stay tuned. All right, enough with ads and uh, let's get back to work. Now we're gonna drag in all of these devices and place them in the correct size and position of the reference folder. I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit, but basically straightforward here. Just choose the motion you want. And at this point, you can just customize in any style that you feel fit the best. So now we're starting to get the right amount of devices here in order to fill the entire layout. And something I'm usually uh, thinking about is to how to showcase the core animation flows in the center where they are mostly visible. And also a good tip is that you don't need to recreate all these motion flows. If you don't have enough a big of a system, you can reuse some motion flows and have them peak from the top or the bottom. As you can see here, some of them are repeating, but you can't really tell in this kind of layout. Now we're at the point where we'll find out how long this collection animation will be in the end. And that is very dependent on how long your animation flows are. In this case, fairly short, right under four seconds. But since most social media platforms and the presentation software have the loop functions, that's not going to be a problem. Now we're just going to tweak some small details here in the end. And one thing is to add in the wooden table background in the bottom of this composition. We shrink it down to fit the screen, place it in the bottom. And now when we hide this, we can see that we have the reference in the bottom and we can see that we're missing the shadows from the devices. So let's head over to the effects and presets panel and search for drop shadow. Double click to add it to the layer. And here we're going to try to make as realistic shadow as we can. The work is now done and it's time for rendering. You can do this in many different ways, but I'm going to showcase one that I've been using for the past years. And that is to go up into compositions and select add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. And that's going to open up a shell software from Adobe. And if we focus on the right side here of the window, we're going to first find a format called H264, whatever that means. Someone used one year, one time told me it's going to be great. And ever since I've been using it, but I don't know why. <laughs> and then next we have the presets. Basically you can have different settings here, but in this case it's matching the source and the bitrate from the composition settings. And then we have the output file and here is basically where the file is going to end up. And then we have the status. And if we go back for a second and click the preset one, we're going to get a new model coming up with more settings for this. You can choose your format in a dropdown, your preset. You can choose audio or video, whatever you want to export. And in this case, I'm just going to choose where it's going to end up as well as the name of the file. I wasn't planning on going very in depth here, but you can change even more settings in the bottom tabs here, such as width, height, frame rate, and so on. Let me know if you want more covering just this. And then when we're happy with the settings, let's go down, click OK. And then we're ready to render with the green play icon. And now you wait for an eternity, depending on your machine. Thanks for watching this far. And now we're at the bonus round. And that is to go even more in depth in how to create different type of presentation with this collection, just like the ones I presented in the beginning. And let me start off with a quick tip and when you're previewing heavy things like this and that is to go into the drop down and change the quality. In this case I shoot quarter and that's going to allow you to see more what's happening instead of longer load times. So let's start by deleting this reference layer in the top. We don't need it anymore and then we can drag it up so we can see everything. And then we select all the layers here and then we go into the motion 2 plugin or you can do this manually if you don't have it to parent a null object to all these layers. 
Then simply we go in and add a scale keyframe in the beginning to the end. And then we decide how much we want it to zoom in. So right now it's zooming in, but maybe it can instead zoom out. So right click on these keyframes, select keyframe assist and then time reverse keyframes. And that will just flip the keyframes for you. That's going to be a powerful way to just start close by and then you zoom out and revealing more and more along the way. So now this presentation version is done and we can add it to the render queue as before. And now we can move on to the next version. And that one is fairly simple. Just go into the same null object and go into the attribute of rotation, where you add in a keyframe in the beginning and the end of how much you want it to rotate. And then we can scrub through this and see how it looks and it should be ready for render queue as well. Now we move on to the next one by first deleting the null object in the top because now we want to select each of these devices in each of the columns and individually control them to move up or down. I'll fast forward here and you can see the progression. So there we can control each of these columns now individually with the null objects and then you can adjust wherever you want them to begin at depending on which direction you want them to move. And then we keep the null objects uh, selected and then we go into the position attribute and we want to add in keyframes of the movement. And straightforward here you add in keyframes in the position to define where it starts and where it ends. And a good tip here when you move in the timeline or moving objects usually do shift and then use your arrow keys that's going to jump you in the sequence of 10. In this case I'm using four jumps and in that way I can control so everything is paced in the right speed. Yeah then this is just repeated until you have all the null objects and the rows animated and it should also be ready for render. And now let's create the last layout and that is to select all the null objects and then we create a new null object parenting all these and it's on this one we will manipulate everything together. So as you can see I can do it individually on this one or all of them together with the main one in the center. We'll go into the layer and add some rotation to this as well as scale so we can fill this screen properly with the devices. In this case, we don't keyframe anything on this one. We just use it to control the position of everything else. And then this is ready for render as well. So that was everything for this tutorial. And I thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or what you want to see next. And as always, if you want to see much more coming up, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you very soon again.